Hello everybody. Welcome to another video. Um, I've got some news to tell you and the news is that it's a new video today. It's not, not bad news. That's not funny. Is it? I don't know. I don't know. Welcome back to another video with me, Mr. Thomas Henley from the Asperger's Growth Channel. It's got to say it's lovely to have you here today to cover another new topic. A new interesting topic and that is socializing yes as I've said in a previous video the bane the bane of the autistic existence the mess and confusion of grayness not black and whiteness not logical emotionally driven connection how do we sort that out what do we have to do sometimes it can be so confusing like walking through a maze, a little maze, and not having a map. Sometimes you go down one end and you think that you've got it all sorted out, and then suddenly you put that into practice in the social world, and it doesn't work. It doesn't work. Why? Well, today I'm going to give you three easy, actionable things that you can do to instantly improve your social game your social game, your ability to socialize. Stay tuned. I used to be very socially awkward. I had absolutely no idea what the hell I was doing. It was more of sort of a random display of emotion and cold logic. And a lot of the time, my relationships were confined to texts. To Facebook messages, maybe a video call if I was lucky. But most of the time when I was at school and with my friends, they weren't really that sort of close friends. I didn't feel like I could talk to them or interact with them. I didn't feel like I was part of any group, part of society. And it is a very difficult thing to deal with. And it's taken me a long time, maybe three or four years of constant writing about it in my little on my little iPad constantly trying stuff out, doing my research, looking for YouTube videos and how to improve myself. And I believe it has paid off somewhat. If you if if you can tell, maybe. Over the years my relationships and my ability to make friends has increased. I used to only hang out with girls because I found them easier and easier to understand. I know for some males out there may be confusing, but I liked them. But only recently, around about the time when I went to Thailand, that's when I made some male friends, and that's when I really started to flourish. I started to put a lot of my time into practically engaging on the things that I've learned rather than just endlessly reading and not being able to do any of it. So that's already a little bit of a ramble, but... Let's get into the first point. Number one. Numero one. Body language. Facial expressions. They're really important. I know that there's a lot of people in the autistic community that like to think that autistic people are perfect. Not perfect, but have a way of being which is better than a neurotypical way of being. I'm sort of in, in, in the middle ground on that part. I think there's a lot of things that autistic people are great at and a lot of things that neurotypical people are great at. When it comes to socializing, sure, there are some things about being autistic that are good, such as being direct and truthful and able to verbalize and get over problems in a succinct manner. But there's also the tendency of neurotypicals to have a very well-established social code that allows them to bond easily with each other which to a lot of autistic people will kind of feel like playing into the system and not really expressing who they are and how they are individually but it does work everyone knows that it's just a social code it's just that it's easy to get to know people once everybody knows what to do one of those things that neurotypicals are really great at is expressing body language Body language is very indicative, indicative if that's the 
that's the right word, of your mood and your state and your emotions and your interest. For example, if you are got a very wide body posture and relaxed, you're more confident. You're more dominant, as some people may say. But also, you know, if your feet and your, your body is facing away from somebody, it indicates that you don't really want to talk to them that much. You see that in everyday life. Sometimes autistic people don't pick up on it. We don't, not naturally. It has to be taught. Facial expressions. A lot of autistic people have this sort of strange smile that they do, especially during teenagehood. Someone says, smile for a, a picture in front of a camera, say cheese. We'll go like this. We don't use the, the whole range of muscles in our face because it doesn't feel natural to us and we don't want to do that. But when we do that sort of weird smile thingy, people don't like it. People like to see the expression in your face. This is just one example, just saying. So if when, you, when you're smiling, make sure that you're actually fully smiling, maybe even showing your teeth a little bit, making sure that the little scrunches happen in your eyes, practicing these facial expressions in the mirror and practicing them in reaction to what people say and how much of a good time you're having in your, in your own head thinking about a conversation. It does help and it works. Next is eye contact. I know eye contact is painful. It is on, on the par of being in a torture chamber, having to look into those dead eyes, those seemingly unmoving and horrific things to look at. They're so horrible. The way that they just have a little circle that's pointing towards me into my circles. Very strange. But eye contact is very important. It shows that you are interested in what someone's saying. Shows that you're confident. Shows that you're attracted to somebody. And if you don't make eye contact, you're either seen to be rude or aloof or, God, even weird. I'm weird. I am. You are too. You're a weirdo. Stop telling me that. It's not nice. A good rule for that, 70-30. 70% of the time, make an eye contact. If you're in a group, make sure to just distribute it around the group. 30% of the time, look away. And then go back when you want to say something else. Not just stare away when you're talking like that and then coming back and stopping. That doesn't work. You need to space out your conversations when you make a direct point or something that you want someone to listen to. Make eye contact, and then you can start looking away, if that helps. So what's the point of this point? Learn those body language skills. Practice those facial expressions. Make sure that people are seeing who you are inside through the very minor, or seemingly, seemingly very minor things that we don't express in our posture and in our body language and in our eye contact. And that way, you'll have a lot easier of a time when it comes to socializing. Number two, this is something that is inspired by me, little child Tom, little, tiny little Thomas. Don't, sound, don't know why I'm saying tiny. Comparatively, I was fairly tall, if you didn't know. I'm six foot three now. Hooray, I'm a tree. When I was younger, I used to think the best way of making friends, making people like me, was to tell people why I'm great. Sounds like a pretty okay and logical thing to do in the mind of an autistic person, but in practice, even with other autistic people, if you go up to them and tell them all the reasons why you're great, and you boast, and you tell people about all the accomplishments that you've made, and you try very hard to beat your friends in some casual social game just because you want to win and show that you're better. That's not good. Nobody likes that. You see, humans have this tendency to be a bit egotistical to some degree. Everybody has it. You just don't admit it if you, if you disagree. You do. 
And even if you get upset about that, that's just even more of a convincing argument because your ego is hurt. Stay in the point, boy. Man, woman, fool. The best way to conduct yourself in a social environment is just to be modest. When you're having a conversation with somebody, you know, start off with the, the old boring sort of chat that people have, though that nonsensical, just complete boring talk that people do when they want to meet someone new. Go for all of that. Ask them about themselves. If something comes up that's related to something about you, tell them about it. But don't ever just insert it into a conversation. And if they tell you something great about their life, make sure you appreciate it and you show them that you're interested in it rather than just con instantly switching on to something that you did that's better or similar and better. Nobody likes it. It's taken me a long time to learn that. Egotistical Tom here. At least I know it and I can hopefully work on it by talking to a camera. Number three. Now, you need to monitor. You need to analyze and observe people's interest and disinterest. This is something that a lot of people on the autistic sp spectrum, a lot of people on the autistic spectrum struggle with. And the reason behind this is a tendency to be a bit mind blind, which is a term that has been used about autistic people. And the gist of it is, is that it's very hard for us to put, put ourselves into someone else's shoes. So when we're talking about something that we like, we automatically assume that the other person likes it as well. Combining that with our inability to read facial expressions and body language as well, makes for a potent combination of talking to people who don't want to talk to you and talking about things that don't interest them. Now you could make the argument that if someone isn't interested in what you want to talk about, you shouldn't be friends with them. But the thing is, is not everybody finds everything interesting, even if they are extremely similar to you. I mean, like my best friend, like we get along on so many fronts. Some things she doesn't want to hear me talk about. Some things I don't want to hear her talk about. And that's all right because everybody's interested in different things. I know that navigating the social world can be a very difficult thing once you start out. There's a lot of factors to consider, a lot of things to work on. I like to think of learning these social skills not as masking, not as sort of overriding your identity as a person and getting rid of your neurodiversity. It's more like learning a language. You know, like, you need to express yourself in different ways in order for someone to understand you. Because if you don't, then they won't. The thing is, the thing that i found is that the more that I've learned about how to communicate with neurotypical people, the more that they actually listen to me when I talk about things to do with autism. They actually learn things and have different ways of thinking about the differences that we both have, some of the benefits that we have and the negatives that we have. There's a lot of promise in learning these skills. Learning how to monitor someone's interest and disinterest can be a little bit of a task, it takes a lot of practice. One of the easiest ways of finding out, finding this out is to first Go over those first steps, learn how to do them. Particularly the first one about eye contact. If someone is making a certain amount of eye contact with you when you're talking to them, and then for some reason there's less of it, it's likely that they are either disinterested in talking to you or disinterested in what you're talking about. And you should probably talk about something else. I know it can be so amazing to get the chance to, a little a little plinth for yourself to talk about special interests, things that you love and are passionate about. But not everybody wants to hear it. And sometimes they do, and sometimes they don't. But social interaction is a little bit of a ping pong game. You do, you got to test stuff out. you got to bring things up. you got to ask them questions. 
if you find that you they're not making as much eye contact seeming a bit disinterested in what you're saying ask them something about themselves doesn't matter how vague the question is it'll allow them to become interested in the conversation and for you to listen to something that they want to talk about if you don't like it show those disinterested things but you know I think autistic people generally are interested in people and they want to hear about people's opinions and ideas which is also one of the things that I love about you guys autistic people Asperger's growth legion Socialising can be hard. I'm not saying that it's easy. I'm not saying that you're just going to waltz into it just by reading off a few little points that I've made. But get the ideas of those points into your mind. Do your own research. Practice stuff. Write about your experiences. What went what went wrong? What went, what went right? What are the f- sort of thoughts that you've had? Run it past someone that you're close to. Get an idea of how to interact in a, in a situation and modify yourself and work on yourself every single time you go into those interactions. God, it's like learning a university degree subject. All these Thomasy Tom lectures for you guys to enjoy. Honestly, please take these things into account. They help a lot and they have been extremely helpful for me making friends, getting girlfriends. Sounds like I'm a player there. I'm not definitely not (laughs) they help thank you don't know why I ended it with a thank you I'm not like a public speaker or anything am I oh wait now I've done one two so it's round about the end of the video once more thank you very much for watching guys if you like the video There is a special tool that you can use to show your gratitude for my hard work and dedication to all you loyal subscribers. That's right, I'm looking at you. Please click the like button. And if you want to ask some questions about it, if you're confused on on a few of the parts of it, if you think it's a bit rubbish, if you think there's things that can add to this, some other advice that you can give people, some top tips that you can share with me, Stick them in the comments. And if you want to, go check out my social medias. You can def- you can DM me on them if you want to talk to me individual in on an on an individual basis. Uh, my words are getting muddled in a puddle. And I don't like it. If you didn't already realize, which you probably have, my logo's changed. I've got a new logo. An awesome friend of the family, Mr. Richard. I'll put a link to his work down there, of course. Not sponsored. He has made me a banner and a logo and a new character for the channel. And his name is Happy. Happy the Skull. There will be a physical manifestation of, of Happy in the future. We just need to make wait until his embryo um, is generated and his tissues have sufficiently regrown not regrown, sufficiently grown, his bone marrow has developed, and hopefully he will be joining me in future videos, so look forward to that, yeah, look forward to that, and um, see you guys in the next video, got to, um, got to go to the toilet, it's the truth, what you just, I'm a regular person, everybody poops, I'm not saying that I poop, or I'm going to poop, I'm just saying that that I'm going to the toilet. I'll see you later, guys. Subscribe to my channel.